Welcome. It's Wednesday again, so that means another watercolor uh, Wednesday demo. I'm Shelley, and every Wednesday I do a, a demo at around 10 o'clock Eastern Time. So I'm in southern Ontario, and this morning we woke up to snow. So <laughs> thought that this was probably an appropriate uh, subject for today. My windows aren't exactly frosty yet, but um, any day now, uh, Jack Frost will come and leave his mark. So uh, I see everybody's uh, already chatting in the um, chat window there and uh, saying where you're from. If you're new, by all means, introduce yourself. Uh, tell us where you're from. It's, I, I love seeing where everybody's from, and I'm sure you guys do too, and you're kind of figuring out who's in what area, and maybe you've got a neighbor here. Uh, thank you so much for all of the uh, uh, referrals that you guys are doing. I, I really appreciate that. Um, you know, some people are here by word of mouth. That's the best advertising there is. So um, let's let's talk about our, our window now. So when I was looking at um, doing a frosty window, I, I went through my photos and I have uh, several reference pictures of, of frosty windows. And I've, I, I looked through some YouTube videos to see what other people were doing and things like that. I thought, I want to do something different. And uh, some of the pictures that I have of frost, or my favorite type of frost, is the ones that looks like like frozen feathers, you know, where you have all these uh, little, little swirls and things like that on your glass. So I wanted to try and see if I could uh, replicate that somehow in watercolor. So that's what I wanted to do today, and I wanted to show you some of the experiments that I tried with it, and some that failed, some that didn't, um, and what I finally settled on. So let's move on over to my demonstration here. Let's go to my tabletop. Uh, okay, this reference picture, this is at my actual painting. Uh, it is not actually frost. So this is the type of swirly thing that I was talking about that I really wanted to try to recreate. So um, let's just I'm gonna move something out of the way here. I'm going to talk about some of the tools that I'm going to be using for this. I am going to be using, well, some, some general round brushes. You know, that's pretty typical for every painting I do, I think. Um, these are squirrel hair brushes and assorted brands and, and so on, but they have very soft bristles and I'm going to use those. Now, for the effect of the feathery frost, here's what I want to do. Um, I have an assortment of fan brushes. So I have a couple of different fan brushes here. And these are a, not those bristly type uh, fan brushes. These ones are actually kind of soft bristles. So these are like a Taclon type of bristle. Uh, this, this fan brush here, unless you're working really large, this one really is going to be too big. So I'm going to take this one out. I have these two small ones. One's, one's a little wider than the other. Now, there is another option that I could use, and this one's called a rake brush, or sometimes it's called a comb. And it's because of the, the way that the, um, the ends of the bristles kind of taper off. And uh, this one I've been using for acrylics and stuff, <laughs> but, but it would do for this, this type of application as well. If I get this wet, and um, show you. Let me see if I can zoom in here so you can see this brush a little bit closer. In case you aren't familiar with it, this type of brush, and this one happens to be a low Cornell, and low Cornell is not um, uh, manufacturing brushes anymore. So uh, you won't be able to buy this specific brush, but you can see. And look what's happening to the bristles, how they're all sort of tapered off and um, they look a little bit spiky, right? Like like, like a punk rocker. So uh, my favorite, however, <clears throat> now this one's brand new in this package here. So I'll take this one out. This one is a, let's see if I can get the, the cap off of this. Um, this one is called a filbert rake or a filbert comb. Uh, does this one actually say on it? This one's a half inch. They actually make this in several different sizes, um, but this half inch one is what I happen to have on hand. I used to have some smaller ones and 
they have gone somewhere. Now, when you buy a brush, when you buy any brush, it's like, it's stiff. Look at, <laughs> look at, it's like, it's like full of gel or something. Actually, they, they put that in there just to hold its shape while you're um, purchasing your brush. So what I'm doing is I'm just rinsing this in my water and that takes out that little bit of, um, you, you know, it's like gel in your hair. It holds it and now it's nice and soft. But I especially want you to see, you know, what kind of bristles these are, right? And how they taper off. All right, so this is going to be very useful in creating that feather-like effect over here. So let me show you some of the experiments that I did with this and what I felt worked best and what didn't. I may also be using today uh, some um, a spray bottle. I might. I might be using that. And, um, of course, some salt. So I'm going to use, this is just regular iodized table salt, nothing special, but you could use different kinds of salts and see what kind of effect you get. So there's, uh, you know, there's pickling salt and Himalayan salt and all kinds of things. Uh, road salt might be a little bit coarse. <laughs> it's usually mixed with a bit of sand too. So uh, for those of you in warmer climates, that uh, th that's probably not handy to you anyway. So let me zoom out again. And I'm going to show you some of the things I did and what worked and what did not. All right. At first, I tried throwing a little bit of salt in and I used just a round brush and I tried to make those swirls. And it, it looks a little bit like, um, uh, you know, a cave drawing <laughs> or some sort of hieroglyphics, um, you know, from some ancient... Um, Thing. It doesn't look like this, the softness that I was looking for. I was much happier with this effect, and I made a note of what I did here, um, but this was worked wet into wet, and I think this is much more gentle, much more like the, the effect that I'm looking for. So um, so that's what I'm, I'm doing here, and I'll show you a few more that I tried. Okay, so this is this is actually what you see up here. Well, it looks a lot more gray here than it does here. Maybe I did it in black and white. I'm not sure. But, um, you know, that's this little segment here. This was worked wet into wet. This was worked wet into dry. And you can see it, it looks added on, doesn't it? Um, and this one, well, this one just doesn't look right at all. It kind of looks... I don't know, it looks like ferns or something. Not quite not quite the look I was uh, going for. Now, I, you know that I am not a huge fan of white paint, but in this particular instance, I think that this white paint is going to work very well. I mean, think about it. When you look through a frosted window, there's an opacity to the frost on the window. You can't see through it clearly. So... The fact that I'm using a, a paint that is slightly opaque is not going to be um, a deterrent or a, a problem for this particular thing. So what I'm going to be using for this is uh, Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. That's what I have on hand, but of course white gouache would work just fine as well. And um, But the main thing that I really wanted to um, cover this morning was a couple of the, the sort of the do's and don'ts of, of what will work and what will not. Because if you're just going to go willy-nilly, you might end up with some of the ones that I had over there um, or worse. So uh, first off, let's talk about the swirls, those feathers that the, um, that the frost can make. So I want to try a couple of these little tools that might give me some nice effects. Okay, so there's that. Uh, let's let's first of all try the fan brush. Now I'm not going to do this with white because you won't be able to see it very well. But I'm going to zoom in here a little bit, just at the top here, top of my page, and we'll do we'll do a little bit of sort of experiment to find out what these brushes do. So I'm coming over here to my palette, and I'm going to use I'm just going to use some color I have on my palette, uh, not white, just I want to try the brush first of all and see what it can do and I want to be able to uh, see if I can create the look of the um, feathers. And one of the things that um, 
is really important is that you're going to have to work very quickly to create the effect if efficiently you have to work fast so you better know how how you're going to approach it you can't be slow and careful about this particular um, type of thing if you want to get an effect that is working for you like this so i'm going to use this is first of all the the rake okay this is the rake brush the one that's all spiky but it is squared off look at the end of it it's squared off and if i try to do a curly feather like this it's it's fine it works pretty good but everything is a little bit squared off and that for me isn't isn't exactly what I'm looking for it's almost like a little bit too precise so I, I'm going to try the filbert rake now look at the shape of the end of this one this one is rounded on the tip but it still has those uh those that spiky tip um wow we got people from all over today so we've got uh iran oakville uh waterloo geneva switzerland oxford uk manitoba burlington hometown <laughs> Uh, California, Austria, Brighton, Ontario, uh, Pennsylvania, Oakville. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for joining me. Finland, everywhere. So it, it, it's exciting for me to see where everybody's from. I love, I love that you're joining me from so far away. I have no idea what time zone you're in, but um, I'm really happy that you're here. So I'm going to use this Filbert rake now or the filbert comb it's, it depends on the manufacturer a comb and a rake are basically the same thing so um you can see that this really goes like the it's designed so that those bristles at the end will go very um spiky all right so let's see what i can do with this and for me this this gives a little bit more of a a wisp to it i think uh, but getting your paint the right consistency uh, when you're using one of these brushes is something that you want to practice a little bit because the, you know, too much it'll fill in and not enough it'll look scratchy. So it takes a, a, a little bit of practicing. So that's what I would recommend is that you really take, take the brushes and find out what it can do. So in terms of creating the frost, there's a lot of swirls, um, and they change direction so even the swirls curl <laughs> if you will and and they and it's just kind of like one ends and the next one begins and they're all different directions and you don't know no, it's like snowflakes every time you see a frosted window it's all unique and i just i think that that is so beautiful when um when you get these painted windows if you don't live somewhere cold you you might not really uh appreciate you know how unique this this uh this thing is that we have in these cold climates and um it's, it's really very beautiful so we call it jack frost uh because it looks like somebody came along and painted it and now you're painting it uh but this is this is a sort of sort of swirling and and uh beautiful patterning that happens in um frosted windows and it just kind of goes in every direction so this is the sort of uh, swirly type of thing that you can practice now let's one we haven't tried yet is the um the little fan brush you might prefer this so you don't have to go out and buy each and every one of these brushes that i'm talking about you probably have uh one or two of these on hand right now so i'm going to take a fan brush and see what i can do with this i'm going to use a small one first and it too, look at it, look at the end of it, it's very spiky looking. So it can give a really good effect. But like I said, the consistency of the paint can, can really make uh, a difference here in, um, you know, how scratchy looking or how sort of filled in it looks. And with the bleed proof white, uh, you may have to play with that one a little bit because it's a little bit thicker consistency than the 
um, regular paint, regular watercolor. I do, however, keep my white paint out of my nice palette full of nice transparent colors. And I've talked about this before and, um, you know, pardon me if I'm repeating myself, but I think it's important to note that if I add opaque color to this, you know, this is very, very opaque. This is about as opaque as it gets. If I add that into any of these colors, it's like putting milk in your tea and once it's in there, it doesn't come out. <laughs> so once it gets mixed in there, it kind of contaminates. And, and that sounds like such a negative thing, and it's it's not. It, it Sometimes that is what you want, but you don't want your main palette that you're using all the time to turn into an opaque palette, right? This, is, this I'm trying to keep um, transparent. So I do keep these things very separate. If you have not tried the salt, Oh my gosh, it is so much fun. Um, <laughs> don't get too carried away with it though. You can just go, kind of go nuts with some of these techniques, but um, you know, you want to you want to use this kind of sparingly. Uh, well, you can go nuts, I guess, if you want to. You might as well play with this because you know it's. Uh, and I would recommend don't don't take a painting and say, I'm gonna do this painting and I'm going to put this frost effect on it and I've never done it before, uh, play a little bit first. You know, see if you can create nice swirls and things like that, uh, something that you're happy with, and then come in and uh, and create the effect. Now, I, I did this with this kind of purpley color, but that is not the color that I used for this. I did use white. So as we look, through a frosted window and you all know this if you you know if you live anywhere where there's frost um, that the frost really doesn't show up against white snow <laughs> so if you're if you're doing a window either looking out or looking in uh, you need something dark behind it to really see that beautiful design so if I were to say portray a um, a snowy scene out of a window uh, there's a couple of things I might do. Um, I would, first of all, make the window frame darker because if I make the window frame darker, um, it makes the outside and the frost stand out even more. So let's let's assume I have a, a uh, window pane here. So we'll put a dark window pane here. And I'm just, this is just a sketch. It's not a, it's not a full full fledged demo or anything like that. It's just I am just want to show the effect. All right, so let's say this is your window frame and your your interior of your home or whatever is dark because you're exposing for the frost, which is very very light. And so I would come to the interior or the inside of the window, the the glass part of the window. I didn't complete the window, I'm just going to do one little corner. And now I will try not to touch that because I don't want that to run, but I'm going to wet this. And I'm going to have um, a couple of colors ready to go. Now what I'm going to paint on here is going to be whatever the out outdoor scene is. So let's say for example it is um, trees, all right? Maybe it's your neighbor's trees. And you're looking out the window and you see the trees, maybe the trees are covered in snow, we'll, we'll invent something. But I'm not going to go detailed, and that's the whole thing, is I want to make whatever's outside the window not compete with what's on the window. So anything I do outside the window is going to be um, kind of out of focus, right? So let's make sure this is nice and wet. I'm trying not to touch this window frame here, this brown. I don't want that rate bleeding in. But let's take some, um, uh, let's get some, I'm going to let that settle in for a second and I'm going to get some paint ready. So I'm going to take some yellow because yellow and Payne's gray make a great green. As you can see, nice green. And uh, so I kind of put them all a little bit separate there so that I can get light, medium, dark. And, um, and of course, I'm going to need a bunch of blues uh, for snow. So I'm going to use maybe a little 
uh, cobalt here. Might, uh, might even use some of this purple color that I have here, which is, I don't know, it's probably, probably cobalt and maybe, maybe permanent rose. I, mean, I can't remember what this is, but it's a little bit more purplish, just so I have some variety. All right, so if I am painting trees outside of my window, now I need to have all my, all my gear ready. So my paint ready my salt ready and my brushes are right handy I've got paper towel I've got my spray bottle if I need it and here we go so I'm going to uh, put in some snow all right so I'm going to hint at some snow these of course are shadows in the snow because if I did um, <clears throat> if I did uh, uh, just white snow my my frost isn't going to show so let's put in sort of some snow color here and I'll, I will I don't really need to go quite to the edges of my um, of my window because usually that's the frostiest part right near the edges that's where the usually in an older house or a um, building or anything like that that uh, you have a frost it's usually an indication that your window's not not sealing that well so it's usually an older building but not always sometimes it's just you know the condensation from inside to outside uh, all right so i've got this dark color here now this dark green and i'm going to hint at some trees and we'll just put a little bit of this in here and I'm not filling them in because maybe there's a bit of snow on the trees as well. So I don't have to do too much. But you know, there's my hint of trees in the in the in the background. Alright, so let's let's create this frosty effect. I'm gonna put maybe a little bit more a little bit more blue just down just down along a little closer to my a little closer to my uh, window. All right, so if I make it too light outside the window, it makes it really hard to see. So I'm gonna take a little salt and start sprinkling some of that on here to see what it's gonna do for me. All right, it's gonna start giving me that, that effect. And I'm gonna watch as this is working. Now, even with the salt on there, I'm gonna come in and um, I'm going to start creating the uh, the effect of the feathers okay those frosty feathers and um, I'm going to try just oh I don't even know which one I want to use here but um, I'm going to try this one this is kind of a new brush for me so even with this salt on here and all this wet paint I want to work into wet because working into wet is going to give me um, the the softer effect. All right, so bleed proof white. Now this one's not really, it's not super runny. It's definitely thicker. As you can see, it's a little bit thicker than my uh, regular watercolor. My brush is damp and I'm taking some of the extra off. I'm gonna go easy here at first and I am going to wipe off my brush each time I kind of do a little bit here because if I don't wipe it off I'm just transferring that green all over the place and there is you know I mean I could leave all this to dry and then I could take off the salt and then I could paint into this uh, like spritz it again and paint back into it but um, I'm going to try and do it all at once and see if I can get a good effect all right so you can see that by working into wet I am getting a really really gentle soft effect but I'm really paying attention to those those that feathery effect that you get on the window so I'm going into my paint here and I'm 
Now there's still, uh, the paper's still pretty wet, so as I'm painting into it, it's, um, sometimes it's it's just melting. It's not really doing too much, and, and that's okay. I don't mind that. Um, as I keep painting, this will this effect will be a little bit more pronounced, so because the paper will start drying a little bit. Uh, but I'm getting some good salt. Like I can see that the salt is already doing something here, and keep wiping my brush off as well. Let's uh, let's bring this over so you can see what's happening with this paper towel too. Because I want you to see that I'm wiping this off, and that it is going to give me, um, you know, the right consistency of my paint and that I'm not transferring that green everywhere. So even with the salt on there, I'm not too bothered by um, the fact that uh, it's doing that. It's giving me both effects at the same time. So I need to, and both of these need to be done on wet so it seems to work pretty well. Um, I do have to be careful I'm not transferring too much salt into my um, uh, into my container of white though so um, I am wiping it off as I dip back into it and oh, look at some of these effects cool really soft, um, swirly, swirly type of frost. And it was these feathers that I really wanted to see, can I create that? Can I recreate that with watercolor? Um, and even though this is an opaque watercolor that I'm using, um, I think I found that this really did give me more the effect that I was looking for than, than anything else. You know, just definitely not masking. Masking way too harsh. You want something as soft as a feather. So that's why I'm so determined to do this on wet paper because I know that if I do it on dry, I won't get the effect I'm looking for. It's going to be too harsh. And you, it, because it is glass, some of the uh, that background is going to show through. So I'm coming in here with this paint and I'll do a little bit more and it's staying wet a fairly long time here but um, but I will have to kind of wrap it up so what happens if what happens if I don't get done what am I going to do then well what I would do in that case is I would just leave everything to dry then I would spritz I would take my spray bottle and, and make sure it's a nice misty type of spritz uh, not not one that spits li little droplets and stuff like that, but a nice misty type of um, uh, spray bottle and see what you can create with that. Um, I might even put in a... a I'm going to try a little more salt. I don't know how, how effective it's going to be now that I've got sort of some on here and it's, you know, sort of beginning to dry. It may not do anything, but uh, hey, we'll give it a try. N no harm, right? So blotting my brush again back into my white let's see if I can do a little bit a little bit more because as the paper starts to dry um, I can put more color down like so if I wanted to make a few things a little more white looking I could do that it will actually hold a little bit better so But at this point, I would not go back to any of my um, any of my paint over here. I'm done with this. That's why I worked very quickly with this while it was wet. Uh, the salt effect. Um, if you're not if you've not used salt very much, then uh, here's my here's my advice to you: is that you cannot re-wet and add more salt. It doesn't work that way. You need to put the salt on while things are wet in the first place in order for that to, to be effective. So um, it's it's a one go thing. That's why I said you want to you want to take a few minutes, practice your swirls, 
apply the salt when it's good and wet and this is the effect you're getting like you can see right up in here that it is looking like like little little um, snowflakes even on the gl glass so it's giving you a, a really cool effect generally frost is going to be a little bit uh, a little bit lighter at the edges like I said that's where usually there's a breach in in the seal of the window and that's where it's going to be a little bit lighter so if I fill in a little bit more with this white more along the windows edge that will look even more convincing so I'm rinsing this brush out every you know quite frequently I'm rinsing this brush out get any salt out of it and I'm blotting it on my paper towel every time I kind of come back into my white paint but um, this was the softest uh, result that I got from from this experiment where I was you know trying to see if I could duplicate that beautiful feathery look and uh, but it does mean working a lot working quick working into wet uh, so uh, but that's basically what I did now in a minute maybe you do need to let salt dry on its own it's it's the kind of thing that it needs time every granule of salt is starting to absorb the paint around it and that's what's giving you the effect so if you take the dryer and you start drying this you stop that process and then the salt will do nothing it will just it won't work so the salt is important to leave it to dry naturally and um, this being put on while things are still wet is going to give you the the softest most most uh, convincing in my opinion uh, type of uh, frost so and I could play and play and play forever right create all these effects with these swirls and 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 that's that that sort of beautiful um, feathery look of frost. Uh, I'm using it's not a white gouache that I'm using. This is uh, Dr. P. H. Martin's Bleed Proof White is what I'm using, but a white gouache would also work. So you could do this with white gouache or or Bleed Proof White. Either of those would work just fine. So that's just what I happen to have on hand and that's what I'm using uh, so frequently cleaning out my brush you know salt is not great to be having in all of your paint so you want to be careful of this but uh, let's just swirl around my brush a little bit and if by chance if by chance you you didn't get it done or you're you need more effect or something like that one other little last ditch attempt thing you, that you can do is you can take your fan brush and take a little bit of this bleed proof white right and you could spatter a little bit on here. So when I spatter with a fan brush, fan brush I prefer much over, quite a bit over the, um, like using a toothbrush, because a toothbrush tends to fling and sometimes it comes in a line. So if I tap, the paint goes up and falls down on the paper. So I can tap a little bit in here, but it tends to look a little bit more like snow. But if the paper's a little bit wet or if you spritz it first, uh, that effect will be softer. So. Um, I don't want to spritz this because I don't want to I don't want to mess it up or anything like that I don't want any I don't want to move anything that's here but if this were dry and I wanted to add a little bit more that's what I could do spritz it I could I could tap a little bit in there and and it would diffuse not too unlike what the salt effect is doing and I could add more of the the little swirls but I do like how the swirls are picking up you know the color of the trees outside and that sort of thing and uh, 
I, I like the effect. I think it's it's really nice, and I'm I'm excited. I'd love to hear your ideas of how you're going to use this. I can I can envision a a cat sitting in the window looking out at the snow, or a child inside looking out at uh, you know a storm, and maybe it's a snow day at school or something. They wouldn't look longingly outside, I guess. <laughs> they would be they'd be like probably watching their uh, video games. But uh, uh, yeah, so. You know, you could have a maybe a candle in the window, or you know, like there's all kinds of ideas that you could come up with. Uh, sometimes the most beautiful um, effect when I've seen this frost, because it gets, you know, sometimes it gets most effective overnight when it's really cold, and then the sun comes up and you get actually a kind of the the glow of of morning sun on this frost, and oh, it's so beautiful. So look close at your windows this winter and um, get your camera. I mean, we all have a camera. Every time we have a pick up our phone, we have a camera with us and you can take a picture. Um, I don't know if I can find this actual photo, but I will see if I can find it on my phone to share with you. I should have done that earlier, but um, let's see if I can find it. And, uh, and then maybe I can show you that. So if I do a search for frost, maybe it'll come up. It does not. I'm getting lots of icicles, <laughs> but not frost. Okay, so I don't have the picture at like really convenient at my disposal, but a candle in the window, Christmas light. Oh, Christmas lights, that would be a great idea. You could be looking inside at Christmas lights. That would be cool. But you'd have to paint pretty darn quick to get all those lights on there. But uh, but that I like that idea. That, that could be really nice. What a nice uh, sort of Christmas card that could make. Um, yeah, what other ideas do you have? Like, I mean, uh, I, I've often seen my neighbor's uh, cat looking out the window, and uh, sometimes the window's all frosted, and this cat's looking outside going, ha ha, you're out in the cold, and I'm not. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so anyway, try a couple of different things. Try try to see what works for you. We've got the, we got a little fan brush. We've got the Filbert rake. We've got the regular rake. Um, you know, try a few different things. I've uh, seen even, you know, if you had nothing, nothing at all, uh, see if you can take a brush and, and splay out the bristles and create a similar effect. Um, you know, you can kind of pinch it and, and get a very similar effect to that filbert rake or a fan. And maybe if that's all you have, maybe that's something that you can give a try. But uh, for somebody who doesn't love using white that much, this was a really good... Um, application for this I think. What is my photo on Facebook? It is actually uh, this demo. <laughs> you can see that's this it's the same thing. It just looks a little more gray on screen here. Uh, this was a little bit more blue but the idea is there uh, but that's actually just my painting on the screen. And uh, maybe if I can find that picture maybe I'll add it underneath that uh, that there, that um, post, and uh, you can see that. But uh, look for that kind of thing. Um, I would also suggest that if you're going to do that, try and include enough of what's outside so that you can kind of get a feel for, you know, what to put outside the window or inside the window. Uh, try, try looking at it from the outside looking in. I know it means putting on your coat and boots, but <laughs> you can, you can do that, and. Um, and see what that looks like. All right, so I'm just going to scroll back here for a second and make sure that I can, I haven't missed any any uh, important questions here. I know sometimes at the end, if I, uh, you know, there's a little bit of a delay for me, so by the time I see your questions, sometimes, um, you know, I, I've already said goodbye, and I don't want to miss that. So I'm, I'm just scrolling back to see if there's any questions, and it looks like I've covered it. Well, that's pretty good. And I got um, I got I checked my sound this morning uh, just to make sure that I didn't have any technical issues, which is kind of nice. Um, yeah, uh, so it looks like I got all the questions. I think uh, so. Anyway, I will uh, I will sign off for today. Have fun uh, playing with your little fan brushes or your filbert rakes, 
and creating some beautiful frost feathers. So have a great week, everybody. Thanks once again for joining. Um, you know, if you like it, give me a give me a thumbs up or make a comment in the below the video or anything like that. And uh, have fun. Take care, and we will see you next week. Bye for now.